you're in there more now. Now I'm, am I YouTubing? Am I YouTubing? Are we right? YouTubing now? Are we YouTubing now? <laughs> is this how you do it? This is how you do it. <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome to the video. I'm here with literally one of my favorite people in the entire planet. Me! This is my friend Meg. She she Hi. also has her own YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So as you guys have seen a lot, especially recently, is I've really been enjoying kind of just sharing other people's stories on the channel, just to kind of introduce you to new people. And this is Meg. So I've actually had a lot of, obviously you guys have seen a lot of stories that are like, you know, centered around people losing a lot of weight, which makes sense because, you know, the YouTube channel is called Obese to Beast. But I wanted to be able to feature someone that has, you know, definitely has a story. It might not be a huge, like, weight loss story or something mm -hmm. like that, but there is definitely, like, a story to where Meg got to where she is now with making YouTube videos, helping people, you know, achieve their fitness goals or whatever it might be. So I figured I would just have Meg on the channel and yeah. have her introduce herself to you. And That's me. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Meg, and I'm a YouTuber. I'm firstly a power lifter, so I'm a competitive power lifter. I compete in the um, USAPL and I, you know, that's kind of how I base my channel is yeah. around my powerlifting training. Super strong. Um, I try, I'm trying to get stronger, so that's <laughs> always the plan. And I also interview other athletes, so mm -hmm. kind of similar to what you do, yeah. so instead of interviewing... That's honestly, like, that's, I got a lot of this from her, because she does a really good job at, like, interviewing people that are, like, higher up in, like, powerlifting and stuff like that, so that's why I'm Whoa. kind of striving. We run out of to say. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, <laughs> and, and I think always bringing people in and exposing, well, first of all, I think we have a moral obligation mm -hmm. to share the stories of other people who maybe their stories can help someone else. Exactly. Maybe not everyone, I'm sure a lot of people here maybe can resonate with something that I say, mm -hmm. but they probably identify more with your story yeah. um, and vice versa on my channel. Yeah. But there's, that's not to say that a power lifter can't learn from your yeah, great yeah. weight loss story and vice versa. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure not everyone here is gonna like sign up for their power lifting me yeah. after hearing me talk, but. Um, you know, strength training is still important and yeah. can be beneficial to a weight loss journey. Absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, it's like makes it more fun mm -hmm. to like collaborate with people and yeah. I like to feature others just because I run out of stuff to say. <laughs> I don't know everything. Yeah. And I'm sneaky because mm -hmm. as I'm learning, so I have like the strongest people in the world are on my channel. Mm -hmm. um, so as I'm like making a video featuring them, I'm just hearing what they're yep. saying and I'm like, mm -hmm. ooh, I get all these goodies. <laughs> so it's like really, as a coach, that's my obligation too, yeah. is to like learn from the people who know better than me. So, so yeah, I yeah. think we should all do that. All YouTube channels should feature other people. I yeah, think. absolutely. Because like individuals are boring. Mm -hmm. you, know, like, <laughs> you know, you can only be so entertained by one person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so my story is, well, I was actually an athlete my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I went on to play basketball and I ran cross country. Um, so I was a runner oh, wow. even. I ran cross country in even college. So Jeez. I didn't even know that. Yeah, but after like age 22, 23, after I graduated, you know, you turn into like a regular person yeah. after organized sports are finished. And I had a good few years where I was not really doing much. I was mm -hmm. working, and that was important to me to like start my career. Um, and I don't regret that time. Mm -hmm. But in my free time, I was like drinking and yeah. you know. Were not you like? Did you like notice or like? Were you like kind of aware that like, man, I really want to work out more. Or, like I'm not working out as much. Like did yeah. that kind of cross your mind at all? I think always. I was definitely, um, and I think until I f actually found strength and found like some sort of. Uh, progression that I could track. Mm -hmm. I was always like unsatisfied with uh, my gym life mm -hmm. and unsatisfied with how my body looked. Mm -hmm. I think my first step was I signed up for um, a half marathon with my mm -hmm. mom. So my mom and I trained for that and that was kind of like a concrete goal that I think that's what I was missing. Mm -hmm. After organized sports it's like you know you train for your season and yeah whatever but when that's gone that's just gone mm -hmm. and there's you know you don't know what to do yeah <laughs> so I trained for half marathon and uh, ran for a long time and then I found CrossFit <laughs> <laughs> as you know I knew that <laughs> so I started with CrossFit mm -hmm. and then from CrossFit I how really, long did you do CrossFit for I probably did CrossFit for about an entire year a full year maybe plus I you know, heard about, I was following girls on Instagram mm -hmm. and I was like, I could do a bikini show. Uh -huh. And when I was doing CrossFit, I was really lean. Mm -hmm. I told you, I just told you this, I was doing paleo. Yeah. Back when like paleo was like the, 
that was the CrossFit go-to. Oh yeah. I don't know if it still is because mm -hmm. I'm out of the CrossFit. Yeah, league. it kind of is. I mean, more people are eating carbs now. Okay. Like, it's definitely upping. So cool. But I mean, that was my first introduction to any sort of actual diet that mm -hmm. I followed strict, through. Yeah, strict diet. Um, so I started with CrossFit, and then from then I dabbled in a bikini show. Mm -hmm. um, I did strongman and powerlifting. Mm -hmm. I've done some weightlifting competitions. Um, the only strength sports that I really haven't competed in are probably um, throwing, competitive throwing, and Highland Games. Wow. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess you can classify other things as strength sports. But yeah. But yeah, so once I found competing, I that kind of nature to compete came back. So, mm -hmm. um, but during the com uh, bikini competition, of course, I rebounded and gained a ton of weight. Yeah. Um, I think my body doesn't like being as small and lean as I yeah. was, um, as like most uh, are it's not really that healthy. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, once I found powerlifting, that was kind of when things clicked. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, I can just try to be really good at this. Mm -hmm. It keeps me consistent. I'm having fun. I have a good community with my powerlifting buddies. Um, and, yeah, ever since then, I've just been interested in getting strong. Mm -hmm. And from there, um, getting people Get, getting other people strong. Mm -hmm. So that's where my YouTube channel started. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. When did the YouTube yeah, come into it? It started as a just a diary of mm -hmm. my own personal training. And I think, um, you know, I was watching other YouTubers and seeing how they did it. And like, I would watch Chelsea, mm -hmm. I would watch Max Tuning, and I would watch maybe like Nikki Blackadder. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this looks kind of easy. Um, <laughs> and it's not, like, once you actually put the camera in front of your face, yeah. it's sort of weird. But um, then I thought, you know, I should, maybe I should try and talk to the camera and see mm -hmm. how that goes. And I had a video go viral of a squat progression that I did. Mm. And some of, like, it went viral on Reddit. Yeah, it's yeah. like one of my, like, not least watched videos, uh -huh. but now looking back, I just have had more success mm -hmm. individu with individual videos. But um, that was kind of like the kickstart to, oh, like people care about my strength yeah. and people care to hear about my strength. So um, yeah, ever since then, I've just been making videos and, mm -hmm. and interviewing other people and doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so what would your, um, like if you were to give one tip to somebody that might be like, kind of like going to the gym, just working out, but they really want to like maybe have a specific goal like with powerlifting, mm -hmm. right? Like they want to get into powerlifting, maybe do a powerlifting meet. Like what would your, it doesn't have to be one one thing, but like right. what would you say to that person? Hmm, I think just following a linear progression, especially if you're a beginner, mm -hmm. um, and see how long you can progress for. So a lot of times uh, beginners will experience beginner gains. So mm -hmm. even you may have been in the gym for a while, but maybe you don't squat, bench, or deadlift. Um, you'd probably be surprised how long you can Absolutely. run. Even like if you look up strong lifts, um, you can just run five by five yeah. for weeks, and months, maybe even years. Something that I've noticed, like when, when people say beginner gains, like what people mean by that is like when you first start working out, like you can make huge progress mm -hmm. in a short amount of time. And then once you get into it and you're doing it for as long as like maybe make has been doing it the the gains when I say gains like maybe like new PRs and stuff like that come few and far between because you're so much stronger so you're only able to make so much progress in a year right but like when people say beginner gains like the one thing I've noticed too is that at the beginning you'll start to tweak your form and like once you actually get your form right like you will progress so much at, at first like yeah. when you get like oh when I'm benching like I need to do this correctly and then mm -hmm. oh wow I've it's just you know, put 20 pounds more on my on my PR. Yeah, so. and the important thing there is you may be experiencing technical technical improvements mm -hmm. that uh, help you realize your strength potential. But I would still just follow a yeah, linear yeah. progression and keep um, keep your ego down here, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and just really ride that out for as long as you can. The longer you're progressing, the stronger you'll be. Mm -hmm. um, whereas me right now, I will PR months mm -hmm. uh like years you know yeah. like i'm happy um if i put on if i get a better total each meet so um mm -hmm. with the squat bench and deadlift you take the accumulative total of mm -hmm. those three lifts of your best lifts and if i put two and a half kilos on the entire total so that could even mean lifting the same for most of my lifts um then i'm happy you know mm -hmm. i walk away satisfied mm -hmm. well 
of course I'd want more of that. <laughs> um, you know, that small progression is like as you become a more advanced lifter and a more proficient lifter, um, those will become smaller. That's why it's really fun and addicting in the mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. And now at this point, like if I were to not progress, mm -hmm. um, I would definitely lift differently, but yeah. I would still lift because I enjoy doing it. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, it's just, it's really cool having someone on the channel that is so passionate about, you know, what they do and what they love. Mm -hmm. Because, like, we were kind of talking about this on the on the drive here. I was, uh, you know, telling her, like, a lot of people have been asking me, what is it that's kind of different about me compared to people that might have, like, lost a lot of weight and then gained it back? And I think, honestly, like, the biggest thing that's helped me maintain my weight loss is finding this love for fitness. And, like, the reason I don't say finding love for bodybuilding or finding love for CrossFit, because it really is just finding love for fitness and it can be anything it could be powerlifting it could be olympic rowing it could be whatever it could be you know bicycling it could be whatever it is that you find that you enjoy because if you find something that you enjoy and genuinely like doing it it will never be like oh man i have to get up and like run right now it'll be yeah. like oh i get to get up and run yeah. like because that's the way i feel about going to the gym like i get to you know go to the gym and work on my mobility and like you know gain a little bit of strength hopefully and mm -hmm. it's something that i genuinely enjoy and it's not at all a chore and i understand that that might be kind of hard for some people to kind of grasp like oh I don't I don't think I'll ever like working out but like I challenge you like just try a bunch of different things and like I can almost guarantee there's something out there fitness wise that you will be like oh wow like I really actually like doing this yeah and like for her it's powerlifting yeah <laughs> and I think also the adjustment of goals especially if you come into something with a weight loss goal yeah um usually I ask so I coach um, yeah, athletes yeah. and a lot of times they are a beginner or just getting into mm -hmm. lifting and we ask like do you have a weight loss goal or do you have a strength goal mm -hmm. um, but the way we program is always to get you stronger mm -hmm. um, and the way we track our workouts and the way we really measure progression is by strength mm -hmm. um, because usually that um, kind of feeds the fire to mm -hmm. keep the consistency there mm -hmm. and also um, keep people coming back so you know if you run a 12-week program which is what we have everyone do mm -hmm. um, and then we usually um, depending on the program sometimes we'll test your one rep max mm -hmm. or test like what your new RP8 is yeah. um, so we're like testing heavy singles to really see where you are and people realize like oh my god I'm so much stronger uh -huh. and that is kind of a shift in focus from weight loss to strength mm -hmm. and I think that can be really beneficial for people um, for me it made it so that I I don't want to say I don't care about how my body looks but um and that's a privileged statement too uh, yeah. because I'm you know in uh, I'm fortunate enough to never have needed to have such a weight, uh, drastic yeah. weight loss journey um, but you know that shift in I care so much more about getting strong mm -hmm. than I do about losing whatever maybe excess fat I have mm -hmm. um, that shift in goals keeps me coming back mm -hmm. and that keeps me way more motivated and that progress that I can see mm -hmm. um, means so much more to yeah. me just the way I prioritize yeah. my time in the gym yeah and like the, that's why I say like a lot of people will say, oh, the scale is the devil and, like, you should completely avoid it. I personally don't think that that's true. Like, I think that it is a tool that you should use, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't be the only thing that you're focused on. Yeah. So as far as her, like, saying, you know, if you're able to, you know, increase your lifts a little bit more, that's going to be an awesome goal. That's still something that you have achieved. So that's why only focusing on the scale as far as how much weight you're losing can be kind of difficult and, like, kind of detrimental to some people because you feel like if you're not hitting those weight loss goals or and like the thing with weight loss is like it can be so every day can be so different but like if you're not hitting those goals you feel like you're failing but if you have other things that you're able to focus on whether it's hitting a PR or like you know going through a CrossFit workout and go, getting a better time or running a mile a little bit faster or whatever it is right if you have other goals you're having other things that you're able to focus on that will give you that kind of keep that fire going yeah so you continue you know achieving those goals but then hopefully those weight loss goals will kind of just fall into place as well right so like that's something that's been huge for me is like I don't actively think I need to maintain this weight I just enjoy the life that I'm living and like I obviously I, I do my best I work really hard in the gym and like I have a ton of goals in the gym and then the weight maintenance has just kind of happened to right. along with that and so it's not like something I'm thinking about all the time and I understand that 
that is a, a point that I've got to after years and years. But I, I genuinely believe with my whole heart that anybody can get to where I've got. There's nothing special about me at all. And I always say that and you guys are always like, oh, you're, you're special. But like, what I mean by that is like, there's nothing that I've achieved that I don't think anybody else could with hard work. I guarantee, I just, that's what is, I believe that 100%, so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna go. I just started rambling right there. I, <laughs> no, I, I loved it. it. I, I love can it. feel it. I'm inspired. But, but <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys are interested in Meg's channel, obviously Come it will be out. linked in the description. She really is someone that I look up to a ton because she has a goal. She has what she like loves doing, and she goes for it. And she's just 100 herself, and she does not care. <laughs> and to me, that's really really cool. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It was one of the things. I wanted to say what was it? Oh yeah, look up above I am. <laughs> Obey the warning signs, and when there are flashing lights or wigwags, don't attempt to cross until they come to a complete stop.